Welcome back, everyone, to Horror with Heidi Gaming. I'm Heidi, and this is Silver Creek Falls Chapter 1, Part 2. I have to say that whole thing every time now. So, last time, we, uh, so Sarah, the Boston, the Massachusetts Marshal, and Detective Moore, I don't remember his first name, from the Scotland Yard, both got called in to this town, Silver Creek Falls, to investigate mysterious murders and the disappearance, we found out, of the sheriff of this town, Silver Creek Falls. So we're with the deputy, and we're going around investigating the crime scenes. We already looked at the first one at the sorority house last time. Now we're looking at, we're on our way to this one down here. And we haven't seen it. It's actually at the Town Creek. All right, Sarah. What can you tell us about this case, deputy? All right, we got a call in this morning after the incident at the sorority. Hunters found tons of blood, broken branches, holes in the ground, and all the soil messed up. The sheriff and I took photos, but left the site alone. Thanks. Okay, Sarah, shall we work on collecting evidence? All right. Blood sample added to inventory. Added to inventory. That's a lot of shell casings. Whoever fired these at, at the time... Uh, whoever fired these had the time to squeeze out a few, eh? Question is, was it the assailant or the victim? Casings out of inventory. So we have a whole bunch of evidence. What are these big holes? I wonder how deep they go. Sarah, do you smell that smell again? Yes, it's a mix between ammonia and burnt hair. It's awful. So we have lots of evidence from the last crime scene. But uh, we haven't examined any of it yet. I am curious to see how that's gonna go. Uh, anything over here? No. Uh, oh, there's another note. What is that? Another note? So I guess this rules out a bear or a wolf attack. How do you know the notes belong to the assailant? Hmm, same type of paper as the note in the sorority house. Let's read it. Note added to inventory. Are we gonna read it? Oh, we don't know what it says. Oh, and we learned at the last house there was a note that said something about there were five victims, but there were six people living in the house. Oh, there we go. I think I got everything now. Uh, it's not letting us go anywhere else. Oh! Hmm, this hair is very soft and light. Not human, I'm guessing? Looks like it might come from a wolf or something. We haven't had wolves in these parts for a while. Bears? Nope. Do people camp out here now that it's become a national park? Yeah, of course. Yeah, do you have bears? I don't know. This one looks like it might have been bears or maybe wolves. Animal hairs out of inventory. There were also animal hairs at the last crime scene. But I think it said that they didn't own any pets. So it was unusual. Uh, I think that's it. to interact with, and we can't go anywhere else. Alrighty, let's head back to the cruiser. As soon as I can get there. I'm still not used to arrows, so if I seem like I'm playing this drunk, I apologize. Um, there we go. Alright, off the crime machine number three. Unless we're going to the crime- oh no, they don't have a crime lab, that's right. Okay, deputy, tell us what happened here. At about 11 o'clock, same day as we got the report in the park, we got a call from a nearby farmer that saw a car crash. Where's the farm? A bit less than a mile south of here. A mile away. How did he see the crash? His house is on the hill over there. Sorry, kid, but that farmer is telling you some tales. Pitch black night and close to a mile away from the forest ground. I'm sure he... I'm sure he heard the crash. But no way in hell did he see it. Was he... 
Was he specific on details of the crash? No, he wasn't. Okay, then. So what did you and the sheriff see here? Uh, we looked around to see if there was a body. When we found none, we decided to call it a night. We were supposed to come back the next morning, but Sheriff didn't report in that morning. That's when he went missing. So you left the scene for two days? We put in cones and- we put the cones and barriers up at night, so we didn't think it was tampered. Oh, yeah, because that'll keep- that'll stop tampering. Kid, the local wildlife are more likely to see those cones than a cones as a toilet than a barrier. This whole scene is contaminated. Yeah, no kidding. Sorry, I have to agree with her this time. It was pretty dumb to leaving it alone this whole time. Anyway, let's look for some evidence. Why would you not like post an officer at the scene? So I don't know how many blood samples we're gonna have when this whole when this is all said and done. Oh, I am gonna pick up this note though. Another note. Why am I not surprised? Go on and read it. Note added to inventory. The young rush as if they lack time, but if you rush too much, you risk losing all your time. Well, and this that, that is very true. And more ways than just the obvious one here. Oh, that's good. Good sample added. No blood stains in any of the passenger seats. Solo, dr solo night driver, eh? Impact from hitting the tree seems to have destroyed the engine. Front wheels and windshield are also knackered. This guy must, must have been driving really fast. More shell casings! All three scenes had casings! Looks like whoever is responsible f Looks like whoever is responsible for fired at all his victims. Uh, this is... This is the south, and we're out in the country. A lot of people carry guns out here. Good point, deputy. Shell casings out of inventory. Blood sample... Hmm, a loosely sealed bottle of Merlot. This isn't much left. Bottle of Merlot. Added to inventory. Is that everything now? Alright. On to the next. It isn't at all piercing together, is it, Lee Davis? Oh, it isn't piecing together. Did Lee Davis keep any of his case files or notes or photos in the office? Most of the time, but last time, but oh, but last I saw him, he wanted to make he wanted to take stuff home and study it. I have his spare keys if you want to see what he what he left. As the files in his house, uh, I think we can go learn more if we get access to the case files and the notes. Let's go. Yes, let's do that. I don't know what's up with this music. I feel like it doesn't see what's going on here. This is it, Sheriff. Sheriff Davis's house. The famous man's home. I'm excited. I have a feeling we'll get much better idea of what's going on when we find his case files. Objective, learn as much as you can about Lee Davis. Find his case files. Alright, snooping around the house. Got on the bedside table. Pretty intense. Do you see a lot of violent crime around here, deputy? Not really. Pretty peaceful town. These incidents are the first series are the first serious thing to hit the town since the tornado two years ago. Tornado? Yeah, it was pretty bad. Some local businesses had to leave. Actually, the US Army was looking to buy some land here before the tornado hit. Did they end up buying? Nah, the tornado dissuaded them pretty fast. Oh. Also, a lot of that land was in contention. Apparently the family that bought it was going through some legal problems. Legal problems? 
Yes, apparently a few years, apparently years back they bought it off. That Cherokee tribe I told you about earlier, apparently they swindled them and gave them a rotten deal for it. U.S. Army didn't want to get involved and lost interest in the land. Oh, we do not need to go through all that again. I am sorry, I clicked that. <laughs> it was an accident. There we go. This one is locked! Oh! Beautiful photo. Yes, the sheriff was into photography. He carried the SLR everywhere, even on duty. He would take photos of all sorts of things. Oh, that will come in handy, I'm sure. All the lights are on, he must have left in a rush. Right, kitchen. All clean, interesting guy. Full fridge, he was planning to if he was planning to disappear, he would have emptied this out first. Uh, living area? Oh, computer. Download case files by L. Davis? Yes, please. Let's see, hmm. When I open a file, all that comes up is this nonsense for text. Uh, must be encrypted. Can you still copy the files on your flash drive? Yes, if it doesn't stop me doing that. Very interesting. The man knows how to encrypt files, yet chooses not to lock his computer. Are you implying that he did that on purpose? Most likely. He didn't put up a password for the computer itself, as if he knew someone else would use it. That's odd. Compu uh, copy the file anyway. We could probably find the keyword that deciphers the code later. I'll stand on it. I'm sorry, I'm screwing up everybody's voices today, I'm sorry. <laughs> Why does he have so many? Is this guy a hacker or something? He's got so many computers. That is weird. He has like three computers. <gasps> There's a note! Uh-oh! Another note? Again? Different handwriting this time. What does it say? I want you to know the truth, John 3, 634. It's from the Bible. Let me see if we could find one. The sheriff was a religious man, so I'm sure there's a Bible around here. Go to edit inventory. It's a set of keys. There's no car parked outside, so I don't think those are car keys. Yes, the car is gone. Those aren't his house keys either. They don't look like the copy I have. Best we hang on to these. I wonder. He has a ton of firearms on the wall. And this guy's packing eat, eh? I am my Desert Eagle, Beretta M9, and a Remington 870 shotgun. Jesus, a reliable classic. Wow, you know your guns. I'm in America, I have to. Uh, that's funny. That's funny to me. <laughs> All the lights are on. He was to listen to Russia. We said that already. Alright. Lights are on. Oh. Photos from Antarctica. Oh, it's just on the bookshelf. Police reports 20, 2004 to 2006. I don't remember how old this game is. I don't think it's that old. I don't know how to modify small to medium sized firearms. Oh. I don't think that's legal, Sheriff! Medal of Honor awarded to Lieutenant Colonel Lee Davis, 7th Rangers Division. The sheriff was in the military. Yep, U.S. Army Ranger. How am I not surprised? He was a ranger. If he's dead, whatever killed him must have been pretty intense. That's if he's dead. Uh, with his car, with his car gone, it must be mo it's most likely he isn't dead. I'm surprised he left so many of his firearms behind. I'm sure he's not walking around unarmed. Probably not. Oops. I extinguish it. I guess this guy was really ready for anything, eh? Almost too ready, right? Hollywood Photography, Volume 1 to 19. Lots of books. There isn't a Bible sticking out from the rest. Oh, there is a Bible sticking out from the rest, I'm sorry. Right, John 364, sir, they said. 
from now from now on give us this bread. I don't know what that could mean. It most likely has something to do with the keys, since you obviously left those for someone to find. Oh yeah, the sheriff has a storage unit somewhere. This might be a clue as to where. You're just you just think of that now, not five minutes ago when we found the keys. Are we done? I think that's it. Alright, let's get to the storage area. Where do you think- oh, where do you think Lee Davis storage unit is? What? You're the one that knows them! Why are you asking us? Oh. Doing options. Uh. Just, we'll just start from the top. I don't think the storage unit is there. Then why did you ask me? Oh my god. You're giving me these options and you're telling me they're not there. Oh my goodness. Why wouldn't you just say, let's go there? <laughs> We're not from this town. We don't know this guy. I'm guessing those are like staple options for wherever else we're gonna visit in the game, and he's just gonna ask all four of them every time we have to pick the right one. Oops, I didn't mean to leave. This is it, he even labeled it for us. What's inside? Files on all the victims and some old cassettes. Sheriff Davis used to walk around with his voice recorder so he could record any ideas he had. We should give it a listen. Do you have a tape player? No car. Nah, oh, man, this car is only a year old. No tape player. I have a tape player in my car. I can play it. <laughs> I have a player in my car. I have a player in my car. Let's go back to the hotel and check it out. Cool. I'll leave the blood samples evidence in the police station. I'll drop you guys off first. We'll keep Lee Davis's files if that's okay. Please do. Set tape added to inventory. And he has a shitload of guns in here as well. Let's do some sneaking locked. Well, empty. Phone directories might be useful. Those look a bit heavy. We can pass we can pass by for them later. You're right there. We need a phone directory for some reason. We know where to come back. Documents, but this is, this is all in gibberish. Doesn't even look like a language. It's a code. You need to know this. You need to know the cipher or the keyword to unlock it. It's another way of hiding sensitive information. Looks important. We should take these. I can hold on to those for you. Thank you, deputy. guns. If you're reading this, chances are you're looking for something. Okay. Is there anything else in here? Everything else looks empty. Empty. Something cleared every- someone cleared everything out. Alright. play Lee Davis's tape. Let's go back to my car first. I was just gonna say that, except I didn't realize you were supposed to go to the car. Oh, although I guess that makes sense. Search is on the car and insert Davis. There is something very strange afoot. This is something simply unnatural. In my time as a sheriff, I have never seen anything like this before. Every crime scene lathered in the blood of its victims, yet never a body to be found. Always that smell of ammonia present and ever seen, even though all three scenes are in such different locations. Due to the amount of blood and damage present, am I to assume that a murder has taken place and the body is disposed of perfectly? This seems a bit too simple an answer. I must investigate more. Furthermore, I find it highly disturbing that every confirmed victim has come from the same college nearby. There must be some correlation. I know it must be so. The girls in the sorority all knew each other, and the boy who was killed in the park was a boyfriend of one of these girls, and the last missing piece is finding out about the victim of the car accident. 
Now, I have checked the vehicle's registration, and apparently the car was reported stolen in Durham a few days ago. The owner is alive and well and seems unaffected by these problems, yet obviously distraught at the fate of his vehicle. I must find out the identity of the driver. The notes I'm finding in each scene are also very disturbing indeed, as if left on purpose as a signature by the killer. I am led to believe that the answer lies in finding the correlation between all the victims and seeing who would have a motivation to eliminate all of them. I am not safe. For the past few days, I have felt a presence around, someone watching, someone or something. I do not know if it is human. When you are in a small town like this one, it is not hard to detect when something irregular has happened. If you are listening to this, I am assuming you are also a member of the police force, and I ask you to please see that justice be done. These youngsters had promising lives in front of them, and now their families are telling me they have disappeared. My heart tells me they are no longer in this world. The brutality of the attacks makes me think that perhaps it may have been an animal, or even supernatural. But the lack of evidence makes me think that perhaps it was from someone or something intelligent and experienced. I leave behind my notes for you in case something happens to me. Farewell. Okay, so that was a recorder. This is a really good place to stop, though, so I'm going to pause it for now. <laughs> um, if you'd like to give Silver Creek Falls Chapter 1 a play for yourself and see if you can get ahead of where I am right now, but don't tell me what happens if you do, uh, link's in the description. Also link to Sapphire Dragon Productions if you want to check out their other projects. Um, so we will continue the mystery next time, and for now... Thanks for watching, thanks for being my player too, and until next time, don't get scared without me. <laughs>